All right guys, so I was getting ready to paint this wall and my paint sprayer pooped out on me. Let me show you what went wrong. So this is a Greco model 257025. I've had this one for five years and it's worked flawlessly so far. This is the first issue that I've had. I plugged it in, I saw the little light on the end of the outlet so I knew I was getting power. I turned it on, I heard a quick little er, and then it sounded like a fuse blew. I double checked the outlet end and the light was still on so I knew I was still getting power there. Uh, I thought about buying a new one but I decided it was almost certainly fixable. So here we have it all taken apart. Now, if you are going to be doing a repair on yours, don't let this overwhelm you. I'll show you how it all goes back together and that'll help you while you're doing the disassembly. But basically, once I got it taken apart, I could tell first things first, a fuse was blown. Now this is a little glass fuse and the reason that it's broken is because after I saw that the fuse was bad, I had to break it to bend it up so that I could read the amperage on it. It's a 250 volt, 10 amp fuse. Now. After I looked at the fuse, I was trying to figure out what went wrong to cause that fuse to blow. Now this little bearing right here, this goes on the front of this motor. This motor sits up against this little pump here. So once I pulled the motor off, which was frozen at the time, I was able to move the pump no problem. So now this wheel is spinning, that tells me the pump is still good. Now. I pulled the bearing off with this here, this little gear puller, and then I tried to read the size on it. I couldn't quite get a good reading on it, but I ended up looking it up online. It's a 6,000 series bearing. 6,000 is the size. It's gonna be 26 millimeter on the outside, 10 millimeter on the inside, and then it's eight millimeter wide. This is a 6,000 RS, or a 6,002 RS rather. The two RS just tells you that there's rubber seals on both sides. So I got this from Amazon. I'll put the link in the description for it. What I need to do is press this onto this shaft and then I'm gonna put the motor back onto the pump and then I'll be able to get this all put back into the housing here. Now for this fuse, this fuse is soldered in right here and here. So what I'm going to do is cut it right where it goes to the little fuse holder there and then I'm gonna solder in an inline fuse holder so that I can replace them in the future if necessary. I'm still waiting on that part but I'll be able to get all this put together right now and then as soon as that part comes in I'll show you how to mount that in the last little spot there and we'll be good to go. Now you could probably hammer this on without the press it's just a lot easier if you have access to one just remember to push from the inside race. Thanks. Now when I had initially taken this apart, when I tried to spin this, I had absolutely no movement because of that bearing in there. I tried to spin this, again, no movement, and that's why I ended up just removing these two bolts, simple Torx bits, real, real simple. All right, I've got this put back together. The only screw that's in right now into the plastic is gonna be in the front of the pump on the underside here holding this together. On the other side of this half of the little clamshell is gonna be where the switch goes and also where the little circuit is being held in there. Now I'm gonna to have to hold off here until I get that new inline fuse in the mail and then I'll be able to finish putting this together. So we'll take a quick pause. Now the inline fuse that I'm using looks identical to the old glass fuses that came in automobiles, but there is a difference between the AC voltage one that I've got here and the DC voltage one that came in cars and they're not interchangeable. So if you are gonna be doing this, make sure that you use the right one. I'll put a link for these in the description below. So this is a 250 volt, 10 amp fuse. Same one that was in here before. Only difference is now it's replaceable. All right, guys, now when we started off and we saw those parts on the table, I said it looked a little intimidating, but let's just pretend that you took off these four screws on the front cover and this is what you would see. The only difference that I've done here is just to replace that fuse that was right here with an inline replaceable fuse. Other than that, I replaced the bearing that was inside here on the head and then cleaned it out a little bit. So we should be good to go. Um, as far as I can tell, that was the only thing that was wrong with it. So let's plug it in and see if it works. Well, there you have it. Should be good to go. I'm gonna get this valve cleaned out and then I'll put it in a bucket of paint and we'll see if she sprays. 
Now for this first test spray here, I have the pressure set a little bit too low for the nozzle that I'm using, so I get a little bit of a streaky pattern, but otherwise it was working great. Now the pump does have a very small leak, so if I'm painting a really large room, the pressure tends to drop a little bit, and then I have to turn it up on the machine. So at some point I will need to rebuild that pump, but that'll be a video for another day. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.